I like flamingos, so flamingos yeah. is awesome to me. So which one? Fleming. Good to go. All set. Yep. All right. Welcome to the July second City Council City of Angels meeting. Please stand. And join me for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call. Mayor Pollendorf is absent. Vice Mayor Oliveira. Present. Council Member Herman. Here. Council Member Matilde. Here. Council Member Berlio. Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, item two, approval of the agenda, adjustments to the agenda. Um, Mr. Vice Mayor, I would like to make an adjustment to the, an addition to the agenda. Um, late today I received um, a new resolution from the city attorney and I had amended a resolution regarding the items that we wanted to put on the ballot one for the increase of the transient occupancy tax and the other to make the city clerk city treasurer positions appointed rather than elected and we got word from uh, the county elections office that there were some changes that needed to be made in our resolution and we have done that and they're up on the table here if you wanted to look at them and you guys have them as well the changes were minor but um, the county felt that it was worth redoing the resolutions so I would like to add to the regular agenda or it could be the consent agenda whichever you prefer um, the approval of resolution 1924 submitting a ballot measure for the um, increase in transient occupancy tax and superseding resolution 1912 and the approval of resolution 1926 to put an item on the ballot to make the city clerk and city treasurer positions appointed rather than elected and that supersedes resolution 1914. Okay, I, I'd recommend we add it to the regular agenda and it might better fit for public comment if okay, we wants can, to say anything there. We can call that E sure, on the regular sure. agenda. Yeah. Um, and we'll call it E and F. We'll do them separately. Separately. Okay. And you need <clears throat> you need a motion and a vote on each? I need a motion and a vote to amend the agenda. And make a motion to amend the agenda by adding E and F. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 4-0. Oh. Okay. Um, public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the council on any matter not on the agenda. State law prohibits the city council from acting upon matters not listed on the agenda. Matters raised by the public will be automatically referred to staff or placed on the next meeting's agenda. Each speaker has a maximum of three minutes for public comment. The mayor may reduce the amount of time based on the number of persons wishing to speak. If others have already expressed your position, you may indicate that you agree with a previous speaker. If appropriate, a spokesperson may represent the views of your entire group. Speakers may not disrupt the meeting or use profanity. Any public comment? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Um, in working on the, the city's housing element, we touched base with the Amador Tuolumne Community Action Agency, who informed us that they are desperately seeking people who might want a free new washing machine, dishwasher, low flow toilet under their program for water conservation. They have money from the Department of Water Resources. They're having trouble finding people who want to take them up on their offer to conserve water by getting these free appliances based upon income. And the income levels are relatively decent from one person, 2,100 a month, um, to six people, 5,500 a month. I'm gonna put some applications up front. If you want any further information, feel free to contact us but they also have weatherization programs but they're desperate to hand out some of this
every money that they have. Okay. Yeah. That's something we could post on the city's website. That sounds good. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay. Seeing no further public comment, we will move to uh, report out on closed session. Uh, we met in closed session today at five to discuss one one matter of anticipated uh, litigation and uh, direction was given to staff. Consent agenda, we have items A through B. Does anybody on the council wish to pull anything for further discussion? I was going to pull E. And I'd like to pull C and D. There we go. Any other comments? No, uh, I'm good. How about we vote on A and B? Deal. We need a motion. I make a motion for A and B. Consent. It's for consent. Okay. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. A and B, B pass 4-0. Alvin, I'll give it to you on E. Okay. Um, on E, I just wanted to um, say good job to the community club before it passed just through. Um, Jessica's here. Corin and Johnny are here. You guys have been working your tails off, and hopefully the grant goes through and you guys get a chunk of change um, to help make the park awesome down there. And then I saw on Facebook, too, did you guys get refrigeration, or what yeah. was that? So that's, so I was going to ask these guys. I love uh, you got to come up. <laughs> oh, hi. Cora Brolio, president of the Angels Camp Community Club. Uh, yes, we did get refrigeration. Angels okay. Food Market partnered with us. So we have 450 pizzas coming from Pizza Plus. August 8th, we're going to do a walk-up dinner to raise money for the park. Um, we are obviously optimistic that we will get this grant. All of Amy's and Diane's hard work is no doubt paying off. Um, the outreach in the community is going very well, but that does not lessen our commitment to raising the money on our own. That is something that we're continuing to do. Um, we do not count our chickens before they're hatched, so we are continuing to raise money, and if the grant comes through, then that just means that the Angels Camp Community Club will be looking to um, better or improve different parks and recreational spots within our town um, and we're open to suggestions for that but we do have a chunk of change that the community has helped us raise so we're here to, to keep on keeping on um, regardless of whether or not we get the grant so yes refrigeration is taken care of farmers markets going well everything's awesome yes that's 600 go ahead oh, I apologize I was you said you were going to be doing a drive we are as it turns out um, Papa Murphy's in Sonora has been looking to partner with um, community clubs like ours or schools or some you know some type of nonprofit organization to help raise money so we're hoping to do a drive-through well walk up on August 8th where we offer a take and bake pizza which is not cooked in a barrel which is going to shock people because that <laughs> tends to be <laughs> the preferred method of fundraising in our community um, so we are going to do a take and bake pizza two liters of soda you know Something like that. So <laughs> something a little bit different. Um, the girls are around. Like I know, pizza. but just like pizzas. <laughs> don't bring it up, Veronica. We are not. I don't want to go on record as saying we're cooking them in a barrel. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of what we're looking at. So always looking forward. Always looking at a way to raise money because there's an infinite number of um, possibilities for this community to better itself for children and families, and that's our main goal. So yes, we're taking care of. Thank you. Perfect. Good job. <laughs> All right. Any Thank other, you. Any other comment there? I just want to say congratulations and good job and keep it up. Okay. Why don't we clear that by taking a motion to uh, to approve in a second? I will make a motion to approve E. I'll, I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So E is passed uh, 4 0. Uh, the other two I pulled C and D. Uh, C, I think, is, I'm not sure what's going on there, but in, in the uh, minutes, Susan, mm -hmm. we show Linda is absent. Um, but in a number of the places where votes were taken, we show 5 0. So it should be 4 0. One of the, uh, uh, one of the others is true. Veronica okay. was absent. Okay. Okay. Oh. So um, I will make that change okay. to the, the minutes. Great. But they can be approved. With that change. With that amendment. Okay. So we're looking for a motion on C to approve as amended. I move approval as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Linda and Alvin. 
Yes. 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 And then on uh, D, I pulled that for discussion, and it was just a question of uh, confusion on my part. I thought we closed this out with a letter of June 18th, um, and it looked to me like maybe it wasn't closed out. We have to formally close out the complaint okay. by rejecting it. Okay. okay. So it's a formality issue. For yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm good with that. So with the rejection of the claim, the claimant will have a period of, I believe, it's six months to file a lawsuit if she feels so compelled to do so. And um, uh, we felt that the letter was sufficient, but our insurance company says you have to close Make it. Just formal rejection. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So I'll entertain a motion to pass E uh, D. I'll make that motion to pass D. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 D passes for it. Uh, moving on to regular agenda, item A, contract award. Melissa, you're going to speak to us on that? Sure. So staff recommends a, a contract award with Adams Ashby for our CDBG grant writing and as you know uh, Terry Cox has been our CDBG grant writing and administrator for some time she's recently retired uh, we issued an RFP in fact we issued two RFPs to make sure that we had a competitive procurement um, and we brought Terry back and she assisted Amy Augustine our planning director in the review of the two proposals we received and unanimously the recommendation was for Adams Ashby. Um, all of the expenses for the contract are expected to be covered under the grant administration and under grant funds with the exception of the initial grant writing which could range anywhere from $3,000 to $8,500 per application. Uh, we are currently going to be meeting with city staff to discuss priorities for that application. As you are very familiar, um, discussions so far have been uh, whether or not we explore CDBG for the ballot um, not Valacito, is it the Valacito Road sewer line project or uh, do we explore CDBG for a public safety campus and start moving towards a consolidation effort of city services. Um, and also just to let you know, we anticipate we have some discretionary CDBG uh, funds about $27,000 uh, that we are looking into utilizing for grant application purposes. So for okay. With that in mind, um, I recommend approval of this item. Okay. Council comments? No. That's good. Public comments on item A? Okay, seeing none, entertain a motion. Move approval. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four oh. Good. Item B, Emily, Here we go. you're on the hook. Hello, everybody. Hi, Emily. I'm here with our third quarter financial report as well as um, enter enter the Enterprise Fund's uh, proposed reserve policies. So I'm going to start with an overview of the city's finances. Um, so looking at the city's major revenue sources, uh, I'm projecting through the end of the year uh, about $2.3 million. Um, if you want to reference my staff report, I do uh, mention a few things that have changed signif significantly since uh, my last report. Um, the main things for the general fund have been um, updated revenue projections. Sales tax um, projection was increased by 15,000. Um, and, um, and we are expected to meet our franchise fees budget which we were unsure of at mid-year but that looks pretty good at this point um, let's see uh, 
these are the same uh, tables that we talked about at budget and so if you have any questions on those let me know uh, looks like our property tax um, estimated at 852 and sales tax is at 877 um, my TOT estimate is at right at about a million dollars for the year and um, gas tax tax projections have only changed slightly <coughs> um, Again, if you want me to slow down or if you have any questions, let me know. Um, sure. I'm just going a little fast. We just went over this in budget and nothing's really changed. This is the same numbers that I mm -hmm. did then a couple weeks ago. Um, our general fund expenses were uh, projected to close at approximately 200000 positive, And um, that is primarily thanks to our understaffing in the police department. So they have worked really hard with their understaffing, but the city um, gets to close positive. Um, so that, that that was net of what we had to pay the sheriff during that time too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's our um, general fund cash projection. Uh, looks like we're gonna close at about 1.8, or that's after a budget. I'm sorry. So we're at. My lines are a little off there. We're at about 1.4 at the end of this year. So for sewer, so there were a couple um, change uh, or big items that occurred since the mid-year report, and those have all been um, been before you as items. Uh, we had three major repairs to this to a sewer system. There was a pump. There was a lift station pump at Greenhorn Creek, um, a sewer transfer pump at Holman Reservoir, and then the Greenhorn Creek transmission line. So all three of those um, did change um, my projection significantly. So um, in operations, we're expected to close at 30000 And looking at our debt and capital, um, we're looking at about 94000 So looking our sewer funds cash um, so this is kind of where I want to speed up to because this is what I'm going to talk more in depth about is our cash um, for in the water and sewer funds and so I kind of broke it out um, tentatively with um, you see the different colors in my cash that is my those are my proposed reserves um, within um, the sewer funds cash and so um, within that we have an operations and maintenance reserve <coughs> Um, connect, uh, the connection fee balance, uh, debt service reserve, um, our OPEB reserve, and then our unrestricted um, balance. And so, and that was going up, starting from the bottom going up. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the water fund, and then we'll come right back to that, if that's all right. All right, so operations. Um, So there haven't been any significant changes since the mid-year report. Um, the one thing that I would like to mention is in the capital funds, we do see the Dollar General water line improvement that um, has been recorded that happened since mid-year. All right, and then for our water funds cash, again, with the different colors, um, this has my proposed reserves in there with operations and maintenance then connection fees, debt service, OPEB, and then unrestricted. So now let's talk more in depth about those. Does any, before I move on, I know I kind of breezed through that, but if anyone has any questions or if needs to go back, let you know. You're going to get in depth about moving money around. Yes. To cover the stuff, to cover the the stuff, stuff that, oh, okay. that we need. Cover the 30, yeah. Yes, okay. yes, right. yes. So mm -hmm. these are my reserves policies, and then I have a recommended uh, transfer of funds. And you'll see why we have this recommended transfer. Um, so, so first, right now, as you know, we're doing a lot of water and sewer capital projects. And so it's really important that we identify how much do we need to keep in the bank and how much can we spend without getting ourselves in trouble with 
maintaining a um, good financial position in um, our enterprise funds. And so this is what I am um, presenting as a reserve policy. Uh, this is already uh, in practice. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a convention to have 30% of operations and maintenance in your operation funds. And so um, you want to provide consistent uninterrupted services, and then you can meet all your short-term obligations with that. And so for this, sewer operations is approximately 1.8 million, and water operations is approximately 1.5 million. And so that would mean keeping about 555,000 in the sewer operations fund and 450 in the water operations fund. Um, so the next one is for debt service. Uh, we keep our debt service in separate funds so that we uh, make payments and meet the obligations of our uh, lenders. And so I'm recommending to have um, two years worth of debt, debt payments on hand in each of those funds to ensure timely payments. And in, in case of um, any budget constraints, it would prevent large fluctuations out of the operations budget. Too. And so um, what that means in dollars would be for our debt payments for our sewer is about 830000 and for water about 150000 for um, those two funds. Uh, and then our connection fee funds. And so um, this, uh, there's an annual report uh, that's released in about December, and you'll, you'll, the council will see it in January for acceptance, and that will identify the specific value of those, the connection fees that the city keeps on hand. And so um, this would just uh, make sure that our fund Ha, you know that those are the current balances and they should match what's in the fund so the issue with that was the city has been um, I mean has been um, transferring in funds to the connection fee fund to meet percentage requirements and so what I'm proposing and this is how I presented it in the budget was to when we use the connection fee funds we transfer them out into a project fund and so we uh, maintain the, the true connection fee balance in those funds. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, and then the, next, the last one is the capital reserve fund, or um, this would also be um, an accumulation of our funds that are, is available for, um, for capital projects or um, needed uh, maintenance expenditures. And so um, the idea with this fund, and I think it's best if we look at this, this was a table presented in, the, um, in Melissa's staff report concerning the rate study, and it shows a good um, flow of how the, these funds, we'll see them working. Um, as, we, as we go, we're going to save up money, and then we're going to spend it down as we deliver projects, and then we'll have a period of saving up money, and then again spend it down. And so that's kind of how we want to see these capital reserves work, and so as we spend the funds down, we're going to then afterwards save money the following year to replenish the funds, and then before we spend again. Does that make sense? So with, with the capital reserve fund, any expenditures will also need a replenishment uh, plan. So it's just identifying in the next year's budget, we're going to bring the fund back up to this amount if we're spending it down. Okay, so um, this is my calculations so that we meet uh, those reserve requirements. We have um, enough in, the, in each fund to cover all of these reserves. And then the balance, I think, if, actually I want to go back two slides. So then the, the amount above the other reserves are um, listed here for water and sewer. And um, these numbers are as of our last audit. And so I am proposing that our funds transfer um, be done at, on July 1st of 2018. So that would be the first day of the fiscal year and um, the day after essentially these numbers were audited to, to have a fresh start for the year and then next year too. Okay. Um, so for calculating the, these amounts um, for the sewer O&M, 
there's 30% of our operations. As you can see, the needed transfer is ac actually stems right here. The current balance in this fund is a negative 1.9 million. So I'd like to restore a positive fund balance there. Um, and then for the mitigation fees, you can see our we have 193 connection fees on hand. However, in the current balance, we have 1.4 million. Um, so I'd like to make sure that that is shown as the true amount of connection fees that we have on hand. Um, just to skip over the capital replacement for now, but the debt service, um, we, we have approximately that amount, but as we're trying to um, see exactly how much is available to spend on our projects, we don't need uh, some of that excess. And then um, the balance is the uh, amount that we'll want in the capital replacement fund. And the OPEB is remaining unchanged. I believe that was an amount set aside by council several years ago. And at this time, I'm not proposing any changes to that. Any questions about the sewer fund calculation? What's your take on, on how the operation is maintenance balance got negative in the first place? Um, I believe that it was because they um, alloc the way the utility revenue is allocated between the operations funds and the um, capital funds, it's just uh, allocating the revenue. And I think it was based off of how many um, the amount of the projects in the project fund. And so say um, you have $200,000 in projects budgeted in your capital fund, and so you're, tran you're essentially transferring out $200,000, but maybe that doesn't meet the operations budget um, and creates a deficit in the fund, essentially. And so I, I believe that's how it is. And so moving forward, uh, the budget practices that we've passed ensures that a we must always have a balanced operations budget and so that balance will never go below zero okay. so or below that reserve amount because we'll always have to ensure all, that you and you, you we all comfortable that these will pass auditing tests these move movements of money so the th the thing with that is that in our audit all of these funds are added together so you won't even see it in the audit but um but it's, it's, yeah. it's, one, it's appropriate to accounting standards and everything. Yeah, essentially it's just, yeah, yes. So, and Emily, what you're doing actually, because the concern is the, the mitigation fee revenue, and we're actually cleaning up and being more accountable for the mitigation yes. fee yes. revenue. Yes, yes, it is actually, with, exactly. Okay. Yes. Because I think that that's the big concern is yeah. not wanting mitigation fee revenue to go towards an operations Ex budget. Exactly. With a transfer, but making sure that we're accountable. Yes. For that. Okay. Yes. And so basically what you're saying is that transfers were happening from a budgetary perspective for projects without project delivery, and then not. Or if they were, it was just creating a deficit in the operations fund. Okay. Because oh, you're, okay. you're transferring the revenue out of the operations fund, therefore okay. leaving a deficit yeah. in the operations where maybe the capital fund and, and so that could be how the capital fund um, got, had so much cash accumulated there because maybe projects weren't delivered as, as intended, but the budget transfers were still happening. And so we're confident, though, in our accounting of the mitigation fee revenue. Yes. Revenue. That was reported to you in January. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Looks good. Okay. And so this is the same, the same process for the water funds. Mm -hmm. um, we don't see that huge negative here in the water funds as we did in sewer, but also to clean up this mitigation fee balance is, is critical. And then also identifying how much of the um, amount we have to spend on our capital projects that we are planning on delivering. Any questions there? Okay. Council? Sounds good. Yeah. Nope. Looks like on the right track. Yes, it does. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. Any uh, public good. comment on this particular issue? Okay. Seeing none on that, we will be looking for so I, you yeah. need a motion and a vote to accept the financial That's report. From and approval of the reserve policies. And approval to remove. You need 
and approval of the I would if it would be nice if you had it all specifically said the approval of the because I would also like to but put this in our budget for last fiscal year and then also approval of the transfer can you do that all in one or do you need it we done can twice? do it all in one if we include all the aspects of this item so mm -hmm. it would be um, a Just motion to accept the third quarter financial report approve the enterprise reserve policies and approval of funds transfer and budget adjustments to reflect enterprise fund reserve policies as of July 1st 2018, 2018 right. I'll make that motion <laughs> as stated by Susan. Yeah. That's, that's I'll second it. Okay, you all in favor? Aye. 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 Swaro. Thank you, Emily. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that was a big check good mark job. on my to-do list. Very well. Very good. Thanks. Oh, good. It's big enough. It's a big font. Appreciate Yeah, good, good stuff. All right. That brings us to regular agenda item C. The resolution number on this item is resolution 1923. Uh, is that on B or C? C. C, 19-23. Okay. So Listener. staff uh, requests the authorization for the city administrator. And if possible, um, can we amend it to include my name? Uh, Melissa Eads to sign the related closing documents and real estate documents for the acquisition of real property located on Finnegan Lane and authorization um, to make payments for said property. Happy to answer any questions. This became a requirement of the title company that needed a governing board resolution that I had signing authority to execute agreements on behalf of the city. Okay. Council comments? Good. Public comment. This item, C. Okay. So I might give a, a follow up item um, as it pertains to the property. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't see. Sorry. I am so happy to see this on the agenda, <laughs> and I hope it passes. I've been a support, strong supporter of the Angels Creek Trail for a long time. And there has been a blank spot in what the, where the trail could go because the city didn't have the property and this opens a big piece of that up. There's one piece left, but this is a huge step forward to making that an absolutely beautiful project. And if none of you have walked along the creek in that area, I encourage you to do so. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. John, you want to state your name for the record? Oh, I got it. Are you good? <laughs> I'm John. <laughs> John Broder, 1860 Finnegan Lane. Thank you. <laughs> so just one more update as it pertains to this piece of property and to the overall trail. Drake Haglin and Associates has put together a preliminary application for Prop 68 um, funding for environmental and right-of-way acquisition. So we will continue to keep you posted. There's no need to bring that item forward until they consider our application more seriously, at which point then we will need a governing board resolution. But right now, it's my understanding it's going through the initial screening process. So stay tuned. OK. Exciting. Any other public comment? OK, seeing none, we'll entertain a motion to pass this resolution. I have a motion to pass resolution. Is it 19-23? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four oh. Yes. Watch out for the poison ivy, though. <laughs> it's true. I know. I didn't get it. I was a surprise. <laughs> I was too. I, I washed. I washed with that stuff you told me to get. I was like, oh. Tech new. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. I still got some. Okay. All right. Um, Item D, update on public safety power shutoff readiness. Okay. So we just wanted to give the council an update and make sure that um, everybody is communicating with their neighbors and keeping an eye on the information that PG&E is putting forth because it is good information on how to prepare for the potential for a power shutoff. Um, also, city, we've been working with our PIO, our public information officer, who is Teresa with the police department, and she's prepared a series of press releases. So we are getting that information out there as well. Staff is meeting regularly 
and we have purchased uh, with current year, not current year budget, but prior year budget, because today is officially the second, but um, we have purchased two generators for the fire department here and City Hall, so we are working on trying to determine how best to fund um, the switch so that we can install those generators, and then we are exploring partnerships with the county for the acquisition of a generator for the police department. We're also working with the county on the identification of resiliency centers, so hopefully they will be taking the lead on that as well. We'll be able to make that information public. And then we are trying to identify contractual relationships for fuel source and fuel supply. So we'll continue to keep you posted, but talk with your neighbors, tell them to have food and water and fuel and cash and all the things that pg &E tries to have on hand. And then we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Did uh, have they happened to have have they had a shutdown anywhere in the state since this all came to light? So I heard today at an ACBA meeting that they had one in Southern California, and it was for a period of 24 hours. We know that they had one last year in mm -hmm. Calaveras County. It was yeah. isolated to um, I think the Macaulay, Macaulay Hill, Hill area. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the time, but we did hear that recently. They did have one in Southern California area for 24 hours. I believe they also had one in the Napa Yolo area. Mm -hmm. oh, that's it right. ended up being about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, public comment on that item D, public safety, PG&E. Hopefully everybody here is seeing those things. I'm getting the angels PD. I guess I didn't know Teresa was writing those, but yeah. I did. Yeah. I have seen those. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Nathan might kill me, but we are working on an update to the emergency operations plan. So I won't give a date on when we're going to have it done, but I think we're thinking end of summer, yeah. possibly. So I think all of this is just creating a really good opportunity for staff to come together and talk about emergency preparedness and kind of a good training opportunity for <coughs> us. Um, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't affect our community this summer. Yeah. Okay. So that's just informational. Anything that's else? That's it. That's all I've got. All right. So now we're moving on to item E, which we adjusted the agenda to include. All right. The adoption and of resolution 1924 um, to supersede uh, 19 resolution 1912, putting um, an item on the ballot to increase the transient occupancy tax from 10 percent to 12 percent. Okay, any discussion on the council for that? Yeah. Uh, public comment on that issue? Okay, I don't see any, so I'll entertain uh, a motion on. I make a motion for 1924 to supersede 1912. Okay. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 4-0. And item F is the adoption of resolution 1926 to supersede resolution 1914 putting a, a question on the ballot to make the offices of city clerk and city treasurer appointed rather than elected okay, okay. council comment uh, public comment all right seeing none i'll entertain a motion um i'll move that we have nine, resolution 1926 be superseded by resolution. Mm -mm. Right, no, nope. it's yeah. supersedes. Yeah. Supersedes. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a D on the end. Supersedes 1914, resolution 1914. Is that correct? Can we make it. We need a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four oh. Thank you. Okay. Uh, council reports. Start with Veronica. Um, nothing major to report just uh, again farmers market is uh, wonderful um, it's it's so nice and enjoyable and and definitely a lot of people attending also went to the music in the park which was also at Utica Park the Wednesday prior and that was really nice also um, so always encouraging people to be you know downtown shopping and supporting local business okay 
uh, let's see I guess mainly it's just the downtown uh, just to update the August 17th Angels Night Out this has one two three four bands no one DJ at, and then three bands or music going in three different places nibbles and snacks and wine at various places and beer uh, downtown for Angels Night Out August 17th it's going to be just like bringing everybody down and all the all of the shops or most of the shops will stay open okay so it's going to be a great party August 17th August yeah. 17th that's the third Saturday it's the beginning of the first set of the third Saturdays that'll go year-round hopefully that's the goal anyway what are the hours for that it'll be starting at five and eight nine you know however long it lasts but we're taking you know after Sonora second Saturday they've been very successful but ours is not going to be quite as much emphasis on art there's going to be we're hoping to do bingo at some point and <laughs> whatever square dance who knows we'll see angels night out angels That's night out. out thank you yep third Saturday oh. okay Alvin um, I attended the UWPA meeting for my first one of those and pretty lightning there's a lot that goes on there with power and water transmission and mm. they're trying to figure out how to generate money and keep power on and all sorts of stuff and they're dealing with the pg e blackouts too because they'll have to shut their systems down um, yeah it was an interesting meeting uh, eye-opening so that's about all I got at the moment and they run late you know they're like at 9 30 or 10 o'clock <laughs> it was a late <laughs> meeting so all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only thing I would add to that is that I can tell you that we have a firm agreement with a new general manager with a start date of July 16th for UWPA. And uh, we're hoping to meet with him. Uh, I'm hoping to meet with him on Monday, the 8th. And Karen's in the audience. She'll, yeah. She's been uh, instrumental in getting him to sign the contract and we're happy about that and looking forward to it and that's it uh, so if there's anything else we're going to do calendar okay um, I was corrected on my calendar and have removed the cog meeting I'm not sure but I'll check it, it's me and the man I, I think that you're correct I think so too but I'm not 100% sure I copied this over <laughs> um, Friday the 5th is Farmer's Market. Then on July 10th at 4 p.m. here, they're having an open house to look and look at and talk about the curb, gutter, and sidewalk projects going on in the um, city. On the 11th at 4 o'clock here, they'll be having an open house about the Angels Camp Trail. And at 6 p.m., Planning Commission meets here. And on the 12th, Farmer's Market again. The 15th at 6 p.m. is LAFCO. And then we meet back here for council at 6 o'clock on the 16th. Okay. Save. Good to go. Looks okay. like we're adjourned in record time. Hey. First time in a while, huh? Yeah. It's first time in a long time. <laughs> That's right, eh? Joe needs to run the meeting more often. Yeah, Alvin, I, <laughs> Alvin, I don't think you've been here when we had a meeting like one thing. You come no. In, one thing, boom, and we're gone. Really? That's okay. I had one of those. That was yeah. the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> that was the good old days. Before Melissa came. The good old days. Yeah, she's caused all this trouble. They hired the, they hired the gentleman. <laughs>